good evening friends today we are going to discuss about uh, a concept in abg that is regarding uh, anion gap important thing in anion gap is what is anion gap how is it measured and what is high anion gap metabolic acidosis and what is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis so this is a shorter version of uh, abg so rest will be dealt in uh, next time so first of all what is the concept of anion gap anion gap is a difference between the positive charges and the negative charges in the body so usually it is 10 to 12 milli equivalence per liter in some books it is also taken as na plus plus k plus we are also adding the charge on potassium so here it will come roughly about 14 to 16 milli equivalents per liter the concept so there are two compartments within the body one is filled with positive charges let it be na plus and some k plus another compartment is filled up with negative charges at co3 minus and cl minus remember to maintain electron neutrality always the positives will be equal to negatives so how is it being is by some amount of unmeasured cations and unmeasured anions so when we measure measurable parameters always some gap exists between the measured positive charges and the measured negative charges this compromises of anion gap suppose if there is a condition causing depletion of hco3 minus so what will happen this compartment can can come down so you are seeing decrease hco3 minus so anion gap increases or something causing increase in the charge in measurable anions so suppose unmeasurable anions increases so when this compartment from here to if it becomes here so this the gap also will increases so either decrease in hco3 minus or addition of unmeasured anions or negative charges into this compartment causes a change in anion gap resulting in high anion gap metabolic acidosis now let us see high anion gap metabolic acidosis suppose you are adding an acid to the body let it be lactate or keto acid or ethylene glycol or salicylate any acid will dissociate into h plus and corresponding negative charge now i am putting this again together so suppose all these are cations anions and this being the anion gap now what happens here is this h plus is being buffered by the hco3 minus so what happens is amount of hco3 will come down so definitely the gap increases also what happens is this anions will go and contribute to the unmeasured anions so again this increases all constituting increased anion gap so this is the thing happening in high anion gap metabolic acidosis it can be remembered as methanol poisoning uremia lactic acidosis ethylene glycol poisoning peroldehyde poisoning aspirin or salicylate poisoning and keto acidosis it can either be alcoholic or diabetic suppose patient is with ingestion of ethylene glycol what you have to see for you can see in urine oxalate crystals 
a patient with CHF or shock present with high anangov metabolic acidosis. It can be due to lactic acidosis. An alcoholic presenting with high anangov metabolic acidosis. It can be due to ketoacidosis. History of drug ingestion, high anangov metabolic acidosis. Aspirin salicylate. Diabetic, high anangov metabolic acidosis. So, decay. So, this is the concept of high anangov metabolic acidosis. You can remember by the mnemonic MULEP and this is the concept. Now coming to another important topic, non anionic metabolic acidosis. The same thing. Considering this being the anion gap, here there is HCO3 minus and Cl minus. So what happens here is, whenever there is a loss of HCO3 minus, there will be reciprocal reabsorption of Cl minus. So if 10 moles of HCO3 minus are lost, suppose, Cl minus will be replenished. So this anion gap will remain constant. So that's why it is also called as, as Cl minus is being replenished and increased absorption, it is also called as hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis and non anion gap metabolic acidosis. So usually we use these two terms together but there is a small difference. Coming to the causes. First thing is GIT cause. Important thing is diarrhea. Why diarrhea? You know that in small intestine and large intestine the secretions contain large amount of bicarbonate. So, losing these secretions in the form of diarrhea causes decreased HCO3 minus, resulting in metabolic acidosis. Second thing is pancreatic fistula or external bowel drainage. Same thing, if you drain the bowel outside, all the bicarbonate secretions are going outside. And very, very important thing is ureterosigmoid ostomy. You are bringing the ureter and you are putting it within the sigmoid colon. What happens is the Cl minus will be absorbed, HCO3 minus will be thrown out, and also within the urine there is NH4 plus in urine. It might be absorbed, and its metabolism in liver can cause release of NH3 plus H plus which again can lead to acidosis. So these are the causes of GIT causes of metabolic acidosis that to normal anion gap. Coming to renal causes. Very very important thing is renal fibular acidosis type 2 or distal type type 1 or proximal type. Why I am putting these two together is they are present with hypoxemia. Other type is RPA type 4. Usually it presents with hyperkalemia. What happens in type 1? or distal renal fibular acidosis, you know that in distal fibule H plus has to be secreted. So this secretion is lost. In type 2 or proximal RPA, HCO3 minus has to be taken in. So bicarbonate is usually absorbed more in the proximal convoluted tubule. This function is lost. So both causing acidosis. So either increased H plus or decreased bicarbonate. And what happens in type 4 is it is something like allosterone deficiency. So resulting in hyperkalemia and metabolic acidosis of normal anion gas type. And the third cause is drugs. As you know, hyperkalemia causing drugs such as 
K plus pairing diuretics, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. So what does it cause? It inhibits the conversion of HCO through to H plus and HCO3 minus, decreases the reabsorption of HCO3 minus, and some NSAIDs. Coming to other class, that is others. One is rapid saline administration, hyper alimentation. So remember, when you administer IV fluids at a higher rates, the bicarbonate absorption usually decreases, resulting in metabolic acidosis of non-anion gap type, normal anion gap type. Now, coming to the causes again, non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. So, fistula, so I am putting it in a mnemonic. And ureterosigmoid ostomy. Saline administration, diarrhea, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. So that is alimentation, hyperalimentation, renal tubular acidosis. If our endocrine like picture, uh, we have discussed that uh, aldosterone deficiency. So this you can remember as fused cord, fistula, ureterosigmoid ostomy, saline administration, endocrine cause, diarrhea, carbonic anhydrase, and alimentation or aspirin, NSAIDs, and renal tubular acidosis. That we have remembered it as. M U L E P A T. Now let us see another important concept is urine anion gap. Now we are having a ABG showing non anion gap metabolic acidosis. You have to make sure either it is from the gut that is uh, gastrointestinal tract or from the renal system. So, urine anion gap is calculated as difference between Na plus, K plus and Cl minus. If urine anion gap is negative, so remember negative, it is a gut cause. If it is positive, it is a renal cause. So, what is the concept behind this? whenever there is acidosis within the body, kidneys when functioning well they will try to produce NH3, NH3 will combine with H plus, it will be buffered and there will be production of NH4 plus. The thing is suppose the kidneys are functioning well there will be additional production of NH4 plus within the urine. So when we take it as Na plus, K plus, these are the measurable forms. If the kidneys are functioning well, there will be more amount of NH4 plus. So this is the compartment same. So this is the measured form, Na plus and K plus. This is the unmeasured form, NH4 plus. Whenever there is acidosis, there will be more amount of NH4. So that gradually decreases the sum. So if the kidneys are functioning well, Na plus and K plus will be less than Cl minus, that is the gap is negative. So kidneys are functioning well, the gap is negative. So the cause should be gut. Suppose if it is positive, kidneys are not functioning well, NH4 is decreased, Na plus K plus within the urine is increased. So if kidneys are not working, Na plus and K plus 
will be more because there is a low production of NH4 plus. So it will be more and the difference will be positive. So this is a concept. Negative urinary anion gap shows gut cause, kidneys usually functioning normal. Positive cause usually it is due to not functioning of kidneys. And final thing to remember is if it is an uremia, acute renal failure, very low GFR, it is usually high anion gap metabolic acidosis due to increased accumulation of acids within the body. If it is moderate or mild renal failure, it is usually non anion gap metabolic acidosis. So this is the thing regarding anion gap, high anion gap metabolic acidosis, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis and the concept of urine anion gap. Thank you friends.